Have you ever wondered how the sport of boxing came to be? How did it evolve from bare-knuckle bouts to the globally recognized rule-based sport it is today? Boxing, a sport of strength, speed, and strategy, has an intricate history that dates back thousands of years. It's a history laced with the grit and determination of the human spirit, a testament to our innate desire for competition. The roots of boxing trace back to ancient civilizations. It was a primitive form of combat, a survival skill honed and perfected over time. But it was not until the 18th century that boxing began to morph into the organized sport we are familiar with today. From the bare knuckle era to the establishment of the Marquess of Queensbury rules, boxing has undergone significant transformations. Yet at its core, it continues to be a testament to human strength, resilience, and strategic thinking. Join me as we take a journey through time, tracing the origins and development of boxing. Boxing as a form of combat dates back to antiquity. It's a sport steeped in history, with its roots planted firmly in the sands of ancient civilizations. Let's take a leap back in time to the monumental structures of Egypt. Here, we find the earliest known depictions of boxing. These ancient Egyptians didn't have the luxury of padded gloves or protective headgear. Instead, they wrapped their hands in cloth for a modicum of protection. Now, let's journey to ancient Greece, where boxing was a highly respected athletic event. Introduced into the Olympic Games in the 7th century BC, boxing, or pygmachia as it was known, was a brutal display of strength and endurance. There were no weight classes, no rounds, and the fight only ended when one of the opponents was incapacitated or admitted defeat. The Greeks passed on their love for boxing to the Romans, who added their own twist to the sport. Roman boxing, or pugilatus, introduced the use of the cestus, a terrifying glove-like weapon made of leather straps and sometimes filled with iron plates or fitted with blades. This took the sport from a test of strength and skill to a life or death struggle in the gladiatorial arenas. Despite these brutal beginnings, the basic principles of boxing have remained remarkably consistent over the centuries. Punching an opponent, bobbing and weaving to avoid blows, and the sheer grit and determination required to step into the ring, these elements were as true in ancient Rome as they are in the boxing rings of today. However, the sport we know today is vastly different from these ancient contests. Over time, boxing evolved incorporating rules to protect fighters and make the sport more palatable to spectators. It shifted from a brutal, sometimes lethal contest to a regulated sport with universal appeal. The ancient beginnings of boxing lay the groundwork for the sport's evolution, leading us into the bare knuckle era. As we move forward in time, we step into the bare knuckle era, a time when boxing was a raw and brutal sport. In the gritty world of the 18th and 19th centuries, Boxing was a spectacle that attracted crowds in droves, especially in England. It was an era where men stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, trading blows with bare knuckles, until one of them could no longer stand. This was a time before the neatly roped rings, before the padded gloves and the referee's whistle. This was the bare knuckle era. In the midst of this popular yet brutal sport, emerged legends. One such figure was James Figg, often referred to as the father of modern boxing. He was a renowned champion in England and his fame spread far and wide. He was followed by Jack Broughton, another celebrated fighter, who was known for his exceptional strength and resilience. However, the bare-knuckle era was far from glamorous. It was a brutal, dangerous sport where the lack of formal rules often led to severe injuries and even fatalities. Boxing matches could last for hours, with fighters continuing to trade blows until one was knocked out or gave up. There were no weight classes, no round limits, and no gloves to mitigate the impact of the punches. Broken bones, lost teeth, and worse, were all part and parcel of these fights. Despite the dangers and brutality, the bare-knuckle era was a testament to human courage and resilience. The fighters, with their determination and grit, earned the respect of the masses. However, it was clear that this raw form of sport was unsustainable. The need for a safer and more organized form of boxing was becoming increasingly apparent. The bare-knuckle era was a time of raw courage and brutality, but it was clear that the sport needed to evolve. This led to the introduction of the Marcus of Queensbury rules. 
In the late 19th century, the Marquess of Queensbury rules brought a new era of regulation to the sport of boxing. As the bare-knuckle era drew to a close, the world of boxing was in need of change. Enter John Chambers, a sportsman who saw the need for a structured set of rules to govern the sport. In 1867, under the patronage of John Sholto Douglas, the ninth Marquess of Queensbury, Chambers penned the 12 rules that would transform boxing. They bore the name of the Marquess, not because he authored them, but because he endorsed them. Thus, the Marcus of Queensbury rules were born. One of the most significant changes introduced by these rules was the mandatory use of boxing gloves. This shift marked a departure from the bare-knuckle brutality of yesteryears. The gloves served to protect the hands of the fighters, reduce the severity of injuries, and make the matches last longer, thus increasing the strategic element of the sport. Another key aspect of the Marcus of Queensbury rules was the introduction of timed rounds. Each bout was divided into three-minute rounds with a minute-long rest in between. This change brought a new level of strategy to the sport, making endurance and pacing crucial elements of every fight. The Marcus of Queensbury rules also addressed the issue of foul play, clearly outlining what was and what wasn't acceptable in the ring. Notably, they prohibited low blows, wrestling holds, and hitting an opponent who was down. These prohibitions helped to make the sport safer and more sportsmanlike. These rules didn't just regulate the sport, they revolutionized it. They brought a new level of structure and strategy to boxing, making it more appealing to a wider audience and laying the groundwork for the sport as we know it today. The Marcus of Queensbury rules marked a significant turning point in boxing history, setting the stage for the modern era they have stood the test of time, remaining largely unchanged for over 150 years, and they continue to shape the world of boxing to this very day. With the dawn of the 20th century, boxing entered its modern era, becoming a global sport. As the new century unfolded, boxing began to capture the world's attention. It was a time of growth and change, with the sport transitioning from the underground clubs and makeshift rings of the 19th century to the bright lights of the world's most prestigious arenas. The 20th century brought with it a wave of innovation. The introduction of weight classes, for instance, revolutionized the sport. No longer were smaller fighters at a disadvantage against their larger counterparts. This leveled the playing field, allowing for more competitive and exciting matches. It was also during this time that boxing became a professional sport with athletes making a living from their prowess in the ring. This era also saw the rise of some of the most famous fighters in history. Names like Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, and Muhammad Ali became synonymous with boxing. These athletes weren't just fighters, they were icons, transcending the sport and becoming cultural phenomena. Their influence extended beyond the ring, impacting society in ways that still resonate today. Joe Lewis, for instance, became a symbol of hope and resistance during the turbulent times of World War II. Rocky Marciano, with his relentless fighting style and undefeated record, became a symbol of the American dream. Muhammad Ali, with his unparalleled skill and charismatic personality, used his platform to champion civil rights and challenge societal norms. But the modern era of boxing isn't just about the past. Today, boxing continues to evolve, with new stars emerging and the sport adapting to the changing times. We now see fighters from all corners of the globe, each bringing their unique style and cultural heritage to the ring. This diversity has only enriched the sport, making it more vibrant and compelling than ever. The modern era has seen boxing evolve into a global phenomenon, with fighters from around the world making their mark on the sport. From its ancient roots to its modern form, boxing has a rich and varied history. Starting in the ancient civilizations, boxing was a brutal, life-or-death sport. It evolved in the bare-knuckle era, where the only rule was survival, and champions were made on the streets. The Marquess of Queensbury rules brought a semblance of order, introducing gloves, rounds, and weight classes, shaping the sport into a more civilized contest of strength and technique. In the modern era, boxing has become a global phenomenon, a mix of science, art, and pure grit, with legendary names that echo through time. The history of boxing is not just about punches and knockouts. 
It's a journey of human spirit, resilience, and evolution. It's a testament to our ability to adapt, to refine, to overcome. So the next time you watch a boxing match, remember the centuries of history that have shaped the sport into what it is today.